Hello, uh, welcome to uh, this week's ViewPath TV webinar on motive searches and regular expressions in ViewPath TV. Um, I see that uh, people are still joining, so we'll give them a few moments to sign in. And um, meanwhile, I uh, would like to ask everyone on the call if you um, have a chance to let us know which resource or resources that you use most commonly. Uh, in the chat box, we will post a link to um, a poll. And here's the link displayed on the screen currently. Or you can act, uh, the poll can be also accessed by the QR code. And uh, the poll is being activated right now so that we'll, we'll be able to see in real time uh, responses from you and um, sort of where, where the people um, are coming from and which databases are represented in today's call. I will leave this poll running for, for a little bit, and uh, if we have a few um, moments, we'll come back to it at the um, end of a call as well. Um, and actually, I forgot to show my screen, so <laughs> give me just a second. We saw it there for a minute. Yeah. Okay. Great. Can you see it now? Mm-hmm. All right, perfect. So here's the poll that I will uh, leave running in the back and we'll come back to it and um, take a look again. Um, we'll also include links to a few other resources, uh, most specifically the webinar pages, where you can keep track of the upcoming webinars as well as review previous webinars and uh, recordings and the handouts. In addition to that, we have a um, webinar survey. We appreciate your feedback about how we did. And also, um, you'll have a chance to nominate topics for uh, future webinars. Again, all of the links that I have just mentioned are being posted in the uh, chat section of the GoToWebinar interface. So I see people are still um, joining in, so I'll just give them a few moments, about maybe um, about 30 seconds or so, before we move on uh, with, with the webinar. So meanwhile, um, let's talk about a few organizational um, things, and I'll leave the poll running here. Um, this webinar has handouts. Uh, they should be available from the handout section, and this webinar will be also recorded, uh, so that after the webinar, you will receive an email with handouts and the recording, and both handouts and recording will be also posted on our webinars uh, page so that you can go back and review it at um, another time. We appreciate if you share the links to these resources with anyone who you think may benefit. Um, as we understand, it may be quite difficult to join some of the webinars in real time. All right, so I think we will um, go ahead and start. So um, my name is Evelina Pasenko. I am based at the University of Liverpool and today's seminar uh, will be presented together with Suzanne Warrenfeldt at the University um, of Georgia. As some of you may know, uh, viewpath to have been running weekly webinars and today we will talk about motifs, regular expressions and um, how to search uh, DNA and protein motif data in viewpath. DB. Um, if this is your first time joining the webinar, welcome. Um, and uh, you can get more information about this in previous webinars on the webinar page that is linked in the chat uh, window. Um, a few housekeeping things. Uh, during the webinar, we'll be happy to answer your questions. If you have a question, type it in the question sections. We are also joined uh, by several people from the UPATH TV um, uh, project, and uh, they are Gloria Gerardo Calderon from Colombia and also Sam Rond at the University of Notre Dame. Uh, we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. However, if we run out of time or you have follow up questions, feel free to send us email um, and you can contact us by navigating to any of our sites and essentially clicking on the contact us link. 
Uh, in a few moments, I will pass the screen to Suzanne Wernfeld. And briefly today, um, our uh, outline uh, consists of a brief introduction into motifs and domains, uh, such as patterns in nature, how regular expressions could be used to define these patterns. We'll examine also tools and various types of data that are available in FindGTB for um, your review and also how you can use the integrated data such as uh, interpro domains data to create searches uh, for various features in DNA and uh, protein sequences. So then and I will uh, transfer the screen to you. Sounds good. All right. Okay, uh, can we see my screen? Should be a seashell. Yes. Okay, so as scientists, much of our work can be described as looking for patterns. And no place are patterns more noticeable than in the biomolecules, uh, DNA, RNA, and protein. Because these molecules are polymers of a set number of building blocks, then patterns are evident at many levels. Here's a protein sequence that is a polymer of amino acids. And depending on the sequence of amino acids, then the polymer can form shapes such as alpha helices or beta sheets. And these shapes can fold together to, turn, to form polypeptide chains. And then these proteins can associate to form complexes. So when we treat the sequences as text strings, we can apply some basic computational searches and expressions to find patterns within these sequences. These patterns then are associated with function. The two fine examples of that are signal peptides, uh, which target a protein for translocation, and uh, transmembrane domains, which lodge a protein in a membrane so it can act as a receptor or a channel. At the top here then is a representation of a protein and the signal peptide sequence is at the end terminal while the transmembrane domain, uh, transmembrane domains are spread throughout the sequence. These functional units, signal peptides and transmembrane domains are uh, specific sequences in the proteins that are predictable and findable by searching the sequences. The thing is that each occurrence of a signal peptide or a transmembrane domain is not exactly the same. The sequence may differ a little, but the resulting function is the same. So if you align uh, several peptides or um, protein sequences from a gene or a species, you know, several genes from different species, um, you'll find differences, like there's an F here at position three instead of an L, an R here instead of an S, and, and then some things are the same. But if you study enough of them, you can form a consensus sequence, an average, if you will, or a set of rules that define a signal peptide. So for instance, any signal peptide in general will have an N-terminal domain that that's about four amino acids long, um, a hydrophobic spread of amino acids, and then a C-terminal domain that ends in a threonine glycine. And this alerts a peptidase that's gonna come in and cleave off this signal peptide that this is the place to bind, right? The signal peptide is the information that sends this protein on its way to its proper location, but this cleavage site is what um, tells some other peptidase to come in and cleave this on off when, once it's in its proper location. So it turns out that there is a whole area of science devoted to the discovery, classification, and documentation of domains and motifs. And a major player in that is the Interpro domain, um, I mean, Interpro database of protein families, domains, and functional sites right, in which identifiable features found in known proteins can be applied to new protein sequences in order to functionally characterize them, even if they are unknown. So um, 
The InterPro family of databases is, um, works towards the functional characterization of proteins. They classify proteins into families by predicting domains and important sites. They use predictive models to produce signatures um, or predictive models based on signatures. And there's several different databases that are members of the InterPro consortium. Uh, so here's just a little image of all of the um, members of the InterPro family. There are 13 different databases that make up this make up the InterPro consortium. Uh, each database classifies proteins in different ways using a different set of signatures. Each has a different number of entries, right? So for example, the CDD, which is the conserved domains database, has about 15,000 entries. It is a collection of well annotated multiple sequence alignment models, right? Whereas the superfamily database has only about 2,000 uh, entries, and it is based on a collection of hidden Markov models, which represent structural protein domains. So, protein domains are associated with function, and these are well classified and well documented. Uh, so we've talked about motifs and domains, and I just want to clarify that motifs are recurring nucleotide or amino acid sequences, while domains refer to a conserved portion of a protein. And motifs and domains can function as binding sites, they have enzymatic activity or can, and, and they're often involved in the regulation of transcription um, by binding through regulatory regions. So domains at ViewPathDB, what do we have to offer you and how do we integrate the data that we offer you? So as we integrate genome sequence, we run programs to predict and identify domains. InterPro is not only a database, it offers, also offers a program for searching their signature databases and assigning domains to our own proteins. So we run InterPro scan on all the proteomes that we integrate. We also run signal P to predict signal peptides and TMM, HMM uh, to predict transmembrane domains. And then of course, we integrate those results of the results of these analyses on gene pages in tables and graphs. And we create genome wide searches so that you can search for genes whose protein products have the domains that you're interested in. Okay, so I'd like to demo some of this. Um, and we can do that. I can, of course, show the, you this on PlasmoDB, but we have a new version of our sites that I'd like to demo. Um, and that is betaplasmodb.org. Um, our beta sites were released about a week ago and they represent changes in the back end that help us access the data faster and changes to the interface, as you can see very readily, um, that should help the sites be easier to use. We are asking that you try out our beta sites and use this contact us link to, um, to send us some information if you like, or you can um, access our news where uh, we have links to surveys that you can complete and fill out. In these surveys, you'll be given a few tasks to do on the beta site, and, and then you'll be asked a few questions about your experience during that. All right, so back, back to this. We want to um, look at domain information on, on a gene page and then run some searches that will return uh, genes with domains. Okay, so I am going to go to a gene page here and I'm gonna type the um, gene ID into the, uh, this new site search. I'll click this um, magnifying glass to initiate the search and I'm taken to the site search result. And if it's an exact match with an ID, I get this card at the top, which is a link to the gene record page. So here I am at the gene record page for the apical membrane antigen one. You know, the top is a summary and then at, below that is just a, a list of every piece of data that we have on, on this gene. 
And I know I want to look at the um, protein features, so I'm going to use this shortcut up here, protein features. I click on this and I'm taken to um, the protein properties and features image um, data section in the gene page. So, and we were looking at this a little bit earlier. What I have is at the top is a representation of the protein and it's about from zero to what, 600 uh, amino acids long. This track represents the interpro domains that were returned by our interpro scan run. And it, it appears to have found three uh, interpro domains all associated with the apical membrane antigen. Um, family of proteins. And if I click on this, I will get some details and um, details about this association. This is a PFAM domain with the ID, PF, you know, with an ID that I can go to the PFAM database and look up. And it also has an um, interpro uh, ID also that I can look up. The next track is transmembrane domains. And this gene has, this protein has one transmembrane domain, and then there are two predicted signal peptides. Again, I can click on that and get um, information about um, what the scores were in the signal peptide program that we ran. Okay, there's, a, there's one other thing I want to show you, and that is um, we have a table of interpro domains, and it's actually right above the, um, the image, right? So this table would have all of the interpro domains that were returned by um, uh, our interpro scan. And it has some information associated with that, E values and, um, and, and names and IDs. So that's just an overview of the gene page and what is available there. What if you were coming at it from the other direction? So you know an activity and an associated domain, but you want to find proteins with that activity. So we have created some genome-wide searches. And let me go back to the um, uh, we have, yeah, several uh, genome-wide searches for this. Let's first demo the interpro one, and I'll find that over here. Um, so I just typed interpro into this um, filter mechanism for this for this list of um, searches, and I see that there's an interpro domain search. And when I click on that, I'm taken to the search page with you know the title at the top, and then several um, parameters that I need to fill in before I can click the get answer button. So what I want to do is look. Well, we were talking about signal peptide. Uh, before, so let's go ahead and look for those. Let's and let's look in all organisms. I'll click select all here, um, and then we have to choose a, a domain database, the Interpro, um, and we have several uh, databases that we've interacted with. Uh, I'm going to choose Interpro here, um, and that loads all of the domains that we have in the database from the um, Interpro scan run. And from that, I can choose one. So I'm going to type signal, and and I'm going to choose the Lexa signal pep like um, interpro scan signature to look. Now, when I click get answer, I am searching the results of our interpro scan analysis that we ran on all proteomes in PlasmaDB. And what I find is that when I, um, I'm taken to a results page that shows me that um, the search returned 90 genes, right? There's a graphic at the top. Over here on the left is, um, is an organism filter, and it shows the distribution of my hits across all of the genomes that we searched. And then on the right here is a table of results. And these gene IDs then link to the gene record page and I can um, and I have a table of data. I can add any data that I want to using this add columns button. Any data that's available on the gene page can be added here and I can download that too with this download. Right, so that's a genome-wide search. 
uh, we also have searches for signal peptides. Um, so I've actually, um, if I type signal peptide into this filter, then I can find the predicted signal peptide search. And this is, um, again, the same thing, a genome-wide search. I'll choose all organisms. There are advanced parameters, and these are parameters that are need to be set when you run the signal P program. But we've already done that for you, and we've chosen a couple of um, uh, default settings that we think give a broad range of results. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. But you can, if you know about signal P, you can go in and, and change to, um, you know, modify your results. And so I click get answer. And I'm taken to my result page where I'm presented with, you know, over 44,000 genes that have signal peptides. The distribution across all of the plasmodium organisms that we searched is, you know, somewhere between 800 and 1,000 genes per organism are predicted to have signal peptides. Uh, and the third type of domain that we've been talking about are um, are the signal are the transmembrane domains. So um, I, I'm going to use this drop-down menu of searches up here again, and I'm going to look for the transmembrane domain search. And I find it listed under protein targeting and localization, transmembrane domain count. Um, and again, uh, you know, it's just a single search page. I'll click select all, and then I need to tell it um, how many transmembrane domains I want the genes returned by the search to have, and I'll say between one and And, and I'm presented then with the list of about 60,000 genes that have. Um, and if you are familiar with our, our search strategy system, these are very powerful searches. Um, it's a very powerful thing because you can click add step and combine all of these searches um, uh, together in ways that change the biological meaning of, of your search results. Okay. Um, so let's... Go back. Um, right, so um, that was just a little demonstration of our um, interpro searches. Uh, let's change gears a little bit here and talk about motifs. How do you search for motifs in, you know, view path DB's C of DNA and protein? Well, you treat your um, sequences as text strings and match your smaller query sequence to a larger genome some proteins, right? So if you have a, um, a motif, either DNA or protein, it's a small sequence that, um, uh, that you can match up to the larger sequences of genomes and proteomes. And we have built some searches that return either the location of these on the genome or a set of proteins that actually match your, your sequence. We have, uh, so we've created two motif searches, one for DNA and one for proteins. And to use these searches, you enter your motif as a regular expression. It is compared then against the genome and proteome and you return this list. So what is a regular expression? It's like another language, right? And it's a sequence of symbols or characters expressing a string or pattern to be searched within a longer piece of text, right? You use regular expressions to build in the ambiguity of a consensus sequence. So if there are 25 different sequences that actually function as a signal peptide, you don't wanna to have to do 25 searches, right? So you can use a regular expression uh, to, uh, it, during your search, and we have um, regular expressions that have normal characters and symbols, right? There's alphanumeric, so the letters of um, DNA and uh, the letters that represent amino acids, and then there are symbols that you use as punctuation to account for the ambiguity. And then just like any other language, regular expressions also have different dialogues, dialects, so different 
um, organizations have organized regular expressions in, a, in different ways, and, and we use actually Perl. So why would you use a regular expression? Well, to find a pattern. Right, and this may not look like much of a pattern, but if you use, um, you know, computer science and some searching, you can find several list of cues. Um, you can also find repeated RKRK uh, sequences. You can find many, many different things. Anything you you want. Uh, so, say you find a pattern in an alignment. Um, you can use a regular expression to search for that within the genome, right? So I've found the, here's an alignment that I've done of four or five different protein sequences. I find this pattern and I use a regular expression to search it against a larger sequence. This is just an example. Um, up at the top then is a sequence that I want to find. Um, if I was going to tell you about this sequence, just, you know, sitting at the de desk next to you, I would say, this sequence must start with a methionine, it mu and that must be followed by an amino acid, um, any amino acid, followed by a serenine or threonine, two times, followed by any amino acid or nothing, followed by any amino acid except valine, and then you know, all of that it can be boiled down into a regular expression that looks like this. The hat means at the front of a sequence, it has to be a methionine. The dot means any, any character, any amino acid can go in here. And then an S or a T, zero to two times, another, uh, any amino acid, and then this means any amino acid except valine, right? So we're, we'll um, post this, these card decks you can hear, and there's a lot of help online, and we have some help in our um, searches then for, um, for regular expression and learning how to do these things. So I just want to give, um, start with one example and I'm going to do that. Um, so restriction enzymes, right? They, they have um, short sequences that they need to bind um, and uh, we have built a DNA motif search that we could use to find those sequences. So I'm going over here to the list of searches. I'm going to type in DNA and I find the DNA mo pat motif pattern search. Um, I will go ahead and search in 3D7, choose that organisms, and then I have to tell it what pattern I want. And I'm going to go ahead and enter the pattern for um, the EcoR1 restriction enzyme site. This, this pattern, this DNA recognition pattern, um, is, has zero ambiguity, right? So I can just enter this one very basic regular expression, G-A-A-T-T-C, and run the search and I will find where this is located anywhere in um, the PF3D7 genome. And what I find is, is that it's here in um, a, about 8,000 times on the genome. Um, so that's the basic search. And I will uh, turn it back to Eve, who is going to elaborate on these and show us how to, um, to use our strategy system to co-locate these with genes. All right, thank you, Susan. Uh -huh. All right, and you should be uh, seeing my screen now. Yep. Yep, great. Uh, the poll is still going, and I will go back to, um, first I'll give um, a little bit more information about how you can use special characters to uh, define the patterns. Uh, this is available as, as uh, a handout for you, whether through the GoToWebinar interface or from our website. 
Um, obviously, as Suzanne said, uh, some motifs are uh, ambiguous and some not, and you wish everything was very straightforward because then you would need to invent another language to uh, find um, different patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, using special characters is um, quite important, especially if you try to define motifs that are variable, such as, um, as Suzanne just pointed out in her previous slide, where amino acids may be uh, varying not only in the uh, their numbers as far as the uh, number of amino acid between the motif, but also if you want to look for, let's say, hydrophobic amino acids only, et cetera. And so here's uh, essentially a list of special characters that you may want to use when you are trying to look for various types of motifs. And that includes um, uh, some of the characters that Susan have already shown you, including square and uh, curly brackets. And these are just some of the examples where, for example, um, using plus in between the two characters indicate that you'll be looking looking for one or more occurrences of D. Uh, in, the, um, in the expected results, you may expect to find uh, expressions such as ADF, ADDF, and, and etc. I won't go through, um, mo mo I, I will not go through a lot of, of um, uh, these this example, but I just kind of point out those that we will use in the uh, upcoming exercise or some, something that may be similar if you're trying to uh, look for the motifs also um, with a sort of predicted string of the amino acids before or after, such as N-terminal uh, motifs or C-terminal domains. Um, for example, uh, uh, square brackets can be used to identify or rather to uh, specify characters that has to be found in the motif. Imagine that uh, you're looking for something that has A and C and one of the characters listed, such as Y, S, and T, um, so that you would expect that the um, string, whether it's a um, sequence, DNA sequence, or a protein amino sequence, will be evaluated for the presence of um, these characters and in this case, you will expect to identify ATC, where essentially the middle um, character varies why A and C remain uh, consistent. Um, using uh, uh, a dot uh, to specify that it could be any amino acid is quite useful um, and is probably most commonly uh, used example is RXLR motifs in oomycetes, where uh, an arginine and leucine have to be present. However, the second and the fourth amino acids can be uh, variable. Um, we, let's see, um, let, let's take a look at, for example, how you can specify the number of the residues that can occur. Um, if you're looking to identify a number of proteins that have to be within the circuit, a certain range, you could uh, identify, you can specify the number of proline that should occur, let's see, uh, between one and five times. You could also specify that any amino acid can vary um, between one and 30 times. And you can imagine that you can combine this expression with down, downstream expression of the domain to say, find this domain if a certain pattern matches within the uh, previous, uh, within the um, 30 amino acids before that. And finally, there is various anchors um, that you can use to ident identify not only the beginning or end of sequence, but also to exclude certain characters, as Suzanne have shown when used with square brackets. For example, using a um, carrot in the beginning of the sequence will look for any sequence that essentially matches the um, shown one here right at the uh, at the beginning or in uh, if you talk about proteins it could be the end terminus for example carrot MDF will uh, will correspond to these type of um, uh, returns however it will not match any other variation or permutation uh, with these letters and finally, um, dollar sign, which we will use in the exercise today, can um, essentially help you to search uh, for any motifs that are located at the C terminus or in, at the um, end of your uh, sequence. So let's take a look at a few examples um, so that we actually 
get uh, learn how to use these special characters. And first, we will start with a very simple DNA motif. And I will turn to the example two, which is also in the handout that is offered with this webinar. And um, we will look for a very straightforward DNA motif and CeraVC. So we know that um, uh, there are a lot of regulatory motifs that are often located in the upstream sequences of genes within the variable distance from, from the gene itself, depending on the organism that you're working with. And in this particular example, I will look for a um, basic helix loop helix or the um, HEL motif that is involved in transcriptional regulation and cell type uh, determination in Saccharomyces cerevisiae, uh, Baker's yeast. We know that um, this particular motif is a uh, binding site for transcription factor FO5, and the gene that is being regulated by FO, sorry, FO4, and the gene that is being regulated is actually uh, the phosphatase FO5. So the, um, the essential um, outline of the search strategy that we are going to create is actually identify the motif uh, for the, trans uh, for the um, transcription factor FO4, and then uh, compare the sequences that we have identified with a specific position of that motif uh, in relation to the gene, such as upstream of the gene within the 600 base pairs, um, which seems appropriate for CRVC, and then confirm that out of all of the genes returned in our search, FO5 is actually amongst those genes. Okay, so let's get started and I will make my screen a little bit larger so you'll, you're able to see um, better. Oh, uh, and by the way, um, today's uh, strategies are available in the uh, beta site under the public strategies and you can essentially click on the link and visualize it or modify the steps to uh, fit your uh, experiments if you like and these strategies will be also available in our legacy site um, uh, um, on GTV. All right so how do we uh, first get started and I'll follow some uh, some of the um, strategy that Suzanne have shown before. First I will look for the um, motif using the filter parameter and select a DNA motif pattern. Once you click on the DNA motif pattern, you are essentially arriving to a screen that allows you to select two parameters. One, the organism that you would like to study, and two, the specific pattern that you would like to find. Um, as uh, note that we have about 164 uh, genomes in FindGDB, so instead of uh, opening up every single um, drop-down menu, sometimes it's easier just to start typing um, using uh, one of the uh, few, few letters from the name of the organism. And here, um, Saccharomyces cerevisiae wild type is pulled up, so I'll go ahead and select uh, the genome, and then I will go ahead and look for the pattern. The pattern that we know um, that is uh, essentially is a recognition pattern for FO4 is the CACGTG. Um, and let's go ahead and click answer. So what this um, what the search actually does, it um, it looks at the DNA sequences as a as a string. And it looks for the pattern that we have just searched within all of the uh, genome sequence. And notice that um, our result matches to um, uh, slightly over 1900 segments. Next, I would like to actually combine this search with another search and identify um, which genes have this regulatory motif within the 600 base pairs upstream of the open reading ring. So let's go ahead at stab and uh, set up our search. Notice that there's two options available to you. First, combine with other genomic segments and then use genomic collocation to combine with other features. I will use genomic collocation because we are we are trying to identify uh, genes or a list of genes. Uh, not genomic sequences. Notice that um, also a different type of operator now is available to you and that operator simply indicates that in your search in step one and step two you're using two different types of data 
and color location is a step that matches uh, these two types of data together to return the uh, results that you, you um, set up within your parameters. So um, let's choose genomic collocation, new search, and then we also want to look for genes. To simply navigate to the organism of choice, use the taxonomy option right here and click on the organism link. You will be redirected to another screen. Similarly, we will use the filter to look for Saccharomyces cerevisiae-S288c and click on continue. And here's a screen um, that um, essentially you need to um, set up correctly to return the desired list of genes. So we are looking for genes in the new step, which is step two, whose exact region overlaps the exact region of the genomic uh, segment. However, the segment has to be upstream of the gene and here where I set up my requirement for 600 base pairs. So notice that the graphical representation in the right has changed, and now it's showing that you're looking for um, um, the genes that the upstream region matches to the um, um, upstream of the uh, gene. And here we are. So uh, now we have about uh, 1,200 genes that uh, fall within this criteria. And uh, remember, you can examine the list of genes returned by navigating to the results table. All of this information is also exportable. And if you uh, want to view additional information about these genes, you can click on Add Columns and um, actually select a few additional fields. Um, to confirm that um, I actually have faux 5 gene, I'll click to combine with other genes, and this time I will look for the text because I don't remember the gene ID specifically. So I will go ahead and say I am looking to find a gene in Cerevisiae. However, instead of searching for all of the fields, I'll just say find, um, uh, look for, let's see, I scroll down a little bit too far, look for, um, so five in gene and name symbol and click run step. And so here's an example of the search where you essentially combine two different types of data and then identify and confirm that one of the known target genes actually within your list. All right, and the next um, search that I'm going to demonstrate actually deals with a uh, protein motif. And I will scroll down to that example, also available from the handout section. So we will take a look at the CAX box protein um, domains. Um, one of the representatives, I guess, of these domains is RAS GTPases. They're important uh, because they're targeted from the cytosol to the inner leaflet of the plasma membrane. And um, the CAX proteins have a very specific structure. And in order, uh, they also undergo post-translational modification. Um, and as such, it's if you are looking for um, this particular motif, um, there are certain requirements that you need to be aware of in order to write it down using Perl expressions. So we know that proteins with CX terminal uh, motif have cysteine followed by two aliphatic residues and then any of the amino acids here such as methionine, serine, glutamine, um, alanine, um, cysteine, um, uh, leucine or uh, glutamic acid. So let's use uh, our knowledge of the regular expressions to rewrite this uh, essentially expression to make sure that we are looking in the uh, terminal of the protein or C, C terminus of the protein. So using this uh, um, amino acids code and also keeping in mind that aliphatic, aliphatic amino acids are normally listed as isoleucine, leucine and valine, but in addition to that uh, you can have alanine and glycine to be positioned on the inside of the protein. We will include all five in um, uh, our aliphatic acid uh, specification. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. We know that the C terminal, CAX protein, must start with cysteine, which will be C, then followed by aliphatic acid residues twice. We know that aliphatic residues are isoleucine, alucine, and valine, 
and also we will include alanine and glycine. So which means find any of those which are included in the square brackets and this motif has to be repeated twice for example. But there are other ways that you can do this as well. And um, also this has to be followed by any of the following residues included within the third uh, square brackets. Now we are looking for this particular motif at the end of the protein sequence or at a C terminus um, of the protein. So let's go ahead and use this expression to search um, to search the uh, database. So again, uh, we can navigate to um, FungiDB and use the uh, motif filter to identify protein motif pattern search. Once you navigate it to the uh, window that allows you to set up your parameters, we will simply copy and paste the pattern that we have specified. And we're interested in looking in Sarah VCA. And then we click on get answer. So notice that you have returned about uh, seven genes that fit your criteria. Again, these genes are listed at the bottom within the results table. And imagine that um, if you're working with, um, that, that does, doesn't really matter with which proteins you're working. Could be RxLR effector proteins or in oomycetes. It could be CAX motifs and cryptococcus. But you can essentially add a step to expand your strategy and add um, other results from other integrated data sets, such as examine transcriptomics data sets, proteomics data sets, uh, sequence analysis, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and at this point, I will uh, turn it back to Suzanne, who um, has another uh, search to uh, demo for you. Okay, here we go. Okay, um, so my this example is really interesting, I think, because we can use ViewPathDB to search for both the binding motif in the DNA and find genes that way, and then we can search for the protein signature for, for the proteins that act on that, um, that bind that DNA. So this is a diagram of a transcription factor TF3A, and it um, this in this image it's binding to its DNA. Um, and this example is all about zinc fingers, which are zinc-containing domains found in a number of transcription factors, and specifically here we're looking at transcription TF3A. The DNA is in red, the protein is in blue, and the zincs are in um, are in green. Right, so there's a, a short motif on the DNA that indicates um, that you know this zinc finger likes and will bind to. There's a signature um, within the zinc finger that uh, makes it bind to the that we know probably has activity for binding these um, GATA boxes. Okay, so I was having trouble with the present presentation there. So, so TF3A is a GATA binding zinc finger protein and the DNA binding motif in the regulatory region of genes that indicates that a zinc finger protein can bind is, is um, a six nucleotide um, sequence. It has an A or T at the beginning, then GATA and an A or T at the end. And the regular expression that um, that represents that is is right here, right? The GATA type zinc finger domain is a is a protein domain, and it's it's much larger, right? <laughs> I went to um, to ProSite and I found this signature, right, that they use in their um, searches and stuff, and it's it's kind of mammoth. Um, and it's very actually complex and and um, very specific, right? So um, we can use our protein motif binding um, 
protein motif pattern search using this uh, regular expression, and we can use our DNA binding um, DNA motif pattern search using that regular expression. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, and I'm going to do that in VectorBase, betavectorbase.org. Uh, um, so the first thing I'm going to do is look for my motif pattern search, and I'll type in motif and do, uh, well, let's do protein, the protein first, right? And our pattern, the mammoth regular expression that we had uh, is right here. Let's paste that in. And I'm going to look for this in um, Anopheles Gambii. I'll click Get Answer. And that ran pretty fast. And what I find is that there are five proteins in Anopheles Gambii with this protein motif. And I'm kind of excited about, the, about these results because when I look down the uh, product description, uh, I see that several of them are already annotated as GATA binding proteins, but a couple of them are not, which is a great um, way to support a hypothesis. You would go back to the lab and do some experimentation on these on these genes, you know, to see if they really are um, GATA binding proteins. So that's pretty exciting, and and then we can look on the other on the flip side at the DNA binding um, motif, genes that harbor the DNA binding motif. So I'm going to look in um, Gambii again, and I will use my regular expression. And uh, click get answer. And I, have been returned a whopping 500,000 DNA segments that contain um, the regular expression that is the GATA binding DNA motif. Um, it does take a little while to load. So there are over 500,000 occurrences of a GATA binding motif in the Gambii uh, genome. Now that's kind of useful information, but what would be more useful is to know whether those are in the regulatory of genes and what genes those are, right? So I'm going to use our co-location tool to um, co-locate these segments to the upstream region of genes, right? Uh, so I can click add step. I'm going to co-locate co these with a new search for all genes in uh, Anopheles Scambii. I'll choose that. And now I have my co-location pop up where I have to say, fill this out correctly to say, um, return each gene from my new step whose upstream 200 base pairs, and all of these are revisable overlaps the exact region of my DNA motif and is on either strand. I'm going to click Run Step. And my results show me that out of the 1,300, you know, 13,800 genes in Gambii, about 4,500 of those have the GATA binding motif in their upstream 200 base pair regions. So, um, you know, in summary, we have just used VectorBase to find five proteins that are possibly zinc finger proteins. And then we have um, found 4,500 genes that are possible binding partners for those, for those proteins. That's the end of my example. All right, thanks, Susan. I'll take the screen back. Yep. 
All right. Okay. Just wanted to um, go back to our poll. Uh, it seems like Plasmo, um, Toxo, and FindyDB are leading. So if you still haven't taken the poll, uh, click on the link posted within the chat window and let us know what is your prefer preferred resource from the uh, ViewPathDB resources. In addition, we are um, will be posting a link about today's webinar that uh, it is an opportunity for you to provide um, feedback about how we did today and also nominate uh, new topics for our future webinars. And um, let's see, are there any questions that have not been answered? We just had one come in. Let's see, it says, is it possible to search for proteins that specifically have multiple copy, copies of a motif? For example, uh, find all proteins that have five or more copies of the amino acids motif. Um, yes, um, it is possible you could use, for example, square brackets, um, not square, but rather uh, curly brackets to identify the number of times that you want for uh, amino acid to be repeated. And just quickly, I'll go back to um, one of the tutorials that we have here, listed here. Um, so you could uh, use actually essentially a combination of square brackets if you want to look for a specific amino, ac amino acid residues to be returned within the string or the sequence of the protein. And using curly brackets, you can identify the number of times that you expect either preceding character um, or the amino acid in question to be repeated within the um, your uh, motif. There are some complex motifs, including the ones Suzanne just demonstrated. Uh, some of those do occur over sort of a, a lengthy proteomic sequence. And uh, give us a shout if you have trouble uh, creating your searches. Um, and we also have a list of various resources that may uh, be helpful if you um, uh, just starting to learn. You know, something to, to add to that, I, th I think your, your um, answer is right on if you want to find the motifs right next to each other, right? But if you want to find proteins that have um, motifs that are far away from each other but still in the same protein, um, you would have to write a... Uh, we don't have specifically a multi-domain gene search, right? Um, and we that is on our list to develop. But you could could take advantage of our um, strategy system and run several different searches, right? Create a regular expression that looks in the first 100 amino acids of a protein and then intersect that with another search that looks for that motif in the second 100 amino acids of a protein. So you could um, do it that way. Um, and one more thing to add to um, uh, Suzanne's thought, uh, within the strategy system, you have an ability to combine multiple steps in one query. So if you run multiple queries to identify, let's say, three different motifs and you want to know whether these motifs can be also found within a certain gene or within the region of the genes, you can combine the strategies together by using options such as click add step and um, using your um, option for adding an existing strategy for example in this case because i should have uh i should have only one uh strategy open in this case it's the um, other search for the dna motif i could choose to combine um, with the previous search yeah one last question was um do we have a tool for searching for new motif patterns? And and we do not. And that's a decision that we made quite a while ago. Um, there are many good motif finders out there. Um, and so we did not want to reinvent the wheel. Um, yeah. OK. Sounds good. I think we are almost at the end of the an hour. And uh, once again, if you have questions or if questions come up after the webinar, feel free to uh, email us by clicking on the contact us link within any of the ViewPathDB resources. Uh, thanks again for joining. 
And we hope to see you soon. Stay uh, tuned to our Twitter, Facebook, and uh, other updates about upcoming webinars. See you soon. Bye. Take care.